Lab Code Agents, welcome to another episode of Random Acts of Coaching. We've got the man, the myth, the legend, Michael Hellickson from Club Wealth, and we are going to talk about something really cool, something that all of us definitely up our game with, uh, with our current past and our sphere becoming even more important than ever. If you want to survive in this business, you got to embrace them. They're your biggest fans. So let's talk about how we're going to up our game with client events and we're going to get business from those client events because I love client events. We did one recently where we had a movie under the stars in our backyard. We had a hundred people there and we didn't just invite our past clients. We invited our neighbors. It was awesome. So um, yesterday we posted the blog in the group about it. It blew up. It's something that people love to talk about. So um, yeah, let's, let's do it. Let's jump right in. I love it. Well, thank you for having me on, and Nick, I really appreciate it. And, uh, you know, first of all, let's talk about why client events, right? Why are client events even important? And I think people need to understand that, first and foremost, the repeat referral business uh, it nationally has gone down in the last five years, not up. And there's, there's a lot of reasons for that. But, it's, you know, five years ago, 61% of the average agent's business came from repeat referral, past clients, sphere of influence. We're just going to call that all referral business, right? Just for the sake of easy uh, discussion. But that being said, 61% of the average agent's business came from referrals uh, five years ago. Today, that number's dropped to 44%. Oh, so you know, why, yeah, it's crazy, right? That's a big difference. And so why is that? Well, it's all this online stuff, right? It's all, you know, people are jumping online before they even tell their friends they're thinking about moving. They've gone online, they've seen a house, they, they got interested in it, they reached out, they got a response, they maybe even went and saw it, and their friends don't even know yet that they're thinking about buying a house. So if that's the case, then why are we having this conversation about referrals and how important referrals are if the numbers have gone down? Because for some people, those numbers are still going up. And why are they able to get those numbers to go up? Well, they're able to get those numbers to go up because they're hitting their, their, their sphere of influence, we'll call it, in multiple ways, the most important of which is these client events. And so when we talk about client events, we talk about any, and it's not, we don't tell people, hey, I'm having a client event. We say, hey, I'm having a party over at my house. Come on over. Like when you did your thing at your place, did you say it was a client event? I forget what we called it. It was like an appreciation party for our friends or something along those lines. There you go. It wasn't like, yeah, it wasn't like, uh, you know, it wasn't so like black and white. It, we, we called it something like, Something about appreciation, but it, it, we didn't like, we just invited people, friends, family, neighbors, past clients, current clients, anyone who we've done business with, anyone who we might do business with in the future, anyone who we just want to remind them that this is what we do. And so, and I think the thing is, it's not like, you know, it's not like going to a movie where Every time you go to a movie, you're like, I'm going to go to AMC. Or every time I want to watch a, a movie on TV, I'm going to order Netflix. People, like, typically don't buy or sell homes every day. So you have to just try even more and more, harder and harder, all the time to stay in front. Stay in front. Absolutely. It's like when you go to North. Once every seven to ten years, you got to be in front of someone all the time for that length of time. Yeah, they got to think of you. The second they think real estate, they got to think Nick Baldwin, Nick Baldwin, real estate, Nick Baldwin, right? Like they just got to automatically think that. It's like when you go to Nordstrom's, right? Some, you, know, you walk in and ladies, you'll understand where I'm going with this. You walk into the store and the sales guy runs right up to you. And what's the first thing he says? Can I help you? And oh, yeah. You, right? You say, no, no, no. I'm just looking. No, no, no. I'm good. I'm not, look, I'm not ready right now. And so then he walks off the other side of the store. Well, then the ladies, they find that perfect pair of Louboutins, all right? That just, it's screaming, I got to have this shoe. So what do they do? Do they, do they walk all the way across the store to go grab that guy that greeted him? No. no. They go to the nearest salesperson and they say, hey, look, I just want to get this in my size. Can you show it to me in my size? And that guy goes and gets it. So we got to be that salesperson that's right next to them when they're ready to buy or sell. So client events are a great way to do that in a low-key, non-salesy kind of way. And that's really important. I really want to emphasize this. We want to be low key and non salesy. Um, the, like I always tease people, I always say that the worst thing you can do is call people up and every time you talk to them, you say something like, Oh, by the way, if you were thinking of buying or selling a home or had a friend or family member who does, do you, do you have a realtor you'd refer them to? And I'd say, 
Man, if you called me and used that cheesy script every time you called, guess what I'm going to think? I'm going to think, man, you are incredibly self-serving. All you care about is your business. You don't really care about me. You care about what I can do for you. And that's not how I want to come across, right? So recently I went to buy, because uh, we recently moved into a new house in a new state, and we went to buy furniture. And I liked the way the guy handled it when we walked in the door. He asked what we were looking for. We told him. He said, okay, sectionals are over there and blah, blah, blah. He goes, you know, go take a look. He's like, I'll check in with you in a few minutes, see if you need it. I thought that was super cool because he let us kind of do our thing. And then five or 10 minutes later, he checked in on us to see how it was going. That was good. I liked that. Well, see, here's it's like when you go on a blind date. Right? I always tell people, see, and Nikki, I don't know, it's probably, you probably, it's been years and years and years since you've been on a blind date. Obviously, you've been married for a long time. But remember back when, when the first time you went on a date with your wife, I bet you didn't knock on the door and then she opens the door up and you just dive right in for a kiss, right? Like, I highly doubt that's what happened. I don't think I did that. Yeah, no. I, I doubt that happened, right? But instead, what did you do? You probably, you know, greeted her, took her out to a nice dinner, maybe even bought her some flowers, maybe took her to a movie or did something fun with her. But you courted her, right? You did some things and uh, brought value to her long before you tried to get her to, you know, in the real estate sense, do business with you, right? So the problem with most agents in their marketing and even with their client events, what they're doing is they're knocking on that door and they're trying to make out with a girl on the front porch right away. <clears throat> we just, we got to stop being that way, right? That's just, that's 80s, right? That's just, that's not today. Definitely doesn't work. No. And so what do we have to do? We have to slow roll it, right? And so perfect example with our client events, what's the number one reason why we do this? because it gives us an excuse to get on the phone with people that know, like, and trust us so we can deepen those relationships, get further into rapport with them so that they'll think about us. So it will be top of mind, top of consciousness when they run into other people thinking about buying or selling a home. But it doesn't matter if they even come to the client event. It's great if they do, but they don't have to come to the client event for us to get value out of it. Would you agree with that? I completely agree. And somebody said, Michael, only ladies go shopping. I, I <laughs> I listen I hate shopping I'm in the door I know what I want I'm out so oh, I'm right there talking about shopping I don't go shopping I know what I'm gonna get and I get it I'm a high D man shopping for me is you know just send it to me from freaking uh whatever from Amazon, Amazon or something I have no um, idea store. Uh, and by the way Nick if you could tag me in the feed I'd love to I'll jump in there oh sure too. that being said guys so think about this um I want to share a story of Christy Lundy. And Nick, I think you know Christy. She's one of our coaches down in San Diego, California. So Christy did her very first client event. She hadn't done one before. Um, and Christy was, was skeptical about whether or not it would work. She, I mean, she believed it. She, wanted, she was willing to give it a try. But she wasn't 100% convinced that it was going to do what she wanted to do. But she did it anyway. So all she did, she followed our checklist, went down through and walk you through most of that checklist today or a good chunk of it. But what she did was she called all of her clients, all of her past clients, sphere of influence, people that she had rapport with. She went through and she called them all and she invited them to her party, right? Now she was holding a party at a brewery. Now I don't drink and I'm, I don't necessarily prefer having alcohol at client events. I think there's some downsides to that. You know, I don't ever want to have to cut a client off or have an awkward situation happen. But whatever, it worked for her. That's what she chose to do. Um, she had 40 people show up to her client event, which sounds great, right? Um, yeah. And, and, and 40 people is, is not bad. But here's the key. What's, what's really interesting is she did five transactions out of that one client event. And four of those five people didn't even show up to the event. Wow, really? Didn't even go to the event. Four out of the five that she did business with. So here's the reason why I share this, because I, I want people to understand, look, even if you don't get great attendance at your event, it's not the end of the world. What matters is you made the connection. You gave the invitation. By simply inviting those people to your client event, you've opened the door for communication that's not self-serving. Because now you call them up and say, hey, Nick, it's Michael Hellickson. Hey, I just haven't talked to you in a while. I just wanted to see how things were going, a little bit of chit-chat. Hey, by the way, you know, I'm, I'm having a, I'm having a little get together at the house. We're going to do a little movie in the backyard under the stars. It's going to be kind of fun. Bring the kids kind of thing. We're going to watch ice age or whatever it is. I just wanted to see if you guys wanted to come out. Yeah. And you're thinking of them and they appreciate that. And it's interesting because on the 4th of July, I texted a bunch of my past clients 
<clears throat> and, you know, not asking for business. And I, we had two people say, oh, by the way, you know. One and of that's them what happens. That you, you just hit the nail on the head because you, they're now, you're inviting them out to this event and they're going to say, oh, well, you know, I, I can't make it to the event. But it's interesting you called. My right. kids were thinking about buying a house or, hey, we were just thinking about selling our place. Can you come by and tell us what it's worth? Yeah, it's true because you're saying it's out of mind and they're associating you with, with real estate. So that's great. Absolutely. So Absolutely. So that's what I really want you guys to start with is start with the why, right? Why am I doing this? And then what's my goal, right? So if I'm going to begin with the end in mind, as Napoleon Hill says, I got to think about what's my goal here? What do I want to accomplish with the, with the client in it? So the number one thing I want to accomplish is stay top of mind. Number two is maybe I, you know, I want to, I want to deepen relationships. So stay top of mind, deepen relationships. And then number three is potentially get referrals right? All of those are great, great things. That being said, I don't ever want to judge a client event by that one client event. And what I mean by that is, as time goes on, this has a cumulative effect. It's like getting a locomotive up and running down the track, right? So when I start off, I put a lot of energy into this and I only get a tiny bit back, right? But if I put a lot of energy into this and I keep doing it consistently over a long period of time, Eventually that train gets up to speed, it develops momentum, and then it's almost impossible to stop, right? So that's yep. what we want. And so here's what we recommend, four client events per year. Oh, right? okay. Four client events per year, that's the key. If we do four a year, we know, and so we do them every, th every uh, three months essentially, right? So if I'm doing one per quarter, then all of a sudden now I have, if I'm following the checklist, I have the ability to reach out to them ahead of the event that gives me a touch point that, and I'm reaching out in several ways ahead of the event. So I've probably got six or seven touch points ahead of the event. And then there's at the event for the ones that attend. Then there's also all the social posts that happen as a result of the event where I'm touching all of these people and I can now retarget all of that to get more contacts with them. And then after the event, I'm calling everybody that did and didn't go to the event. For the ones that did go to the event, I'm saying, hey, man, it was so great to see you at the event. I'm glad we got a chance to reconnect. For the ones that didn't go to the event, I'm saying, gosh, you know, Nick, I'm so sorry you weren't able to make it. We, you know, maybe next time. By the way, the next one we've got is such and such a date. That's great. I love it. And by the way, do you think that every event needs to be like this big extravaganza? Because, because what I um, was doing was we had a big one and then – you know, then there's like little ones that are more kind of intimate. So what is your take on that? I love that you're bringing that up because here's the reality. The reality is no, they do not need to be big. Heck, it could be a barbecue in your backyard. And I'm totally okay with that. It could literally be hot dogs and hamburgers in your backyard. Or heck, we had a client do s'mores on the beach once. Oh, uh, that's cool. Yeah, super cheap, right? You can get some graham crackers, some chocolate, and a couple of marshmallows and you're good to go. Yeah. It really doesn't have to be complex. The key is, again, you're just doing something to bring value to someone without expectation of anything in return. And that's key. And that's why I don't like the, oh, by the way, script, right? Because if I follow it up with, oh, by the way, who do you know? All of a sudden, it's no longer coming from contribution. And now it's coming from a position of, I'm doing this with expectation of something for me. Right. And if you've been doing it right all along, you don't need to do that once they're in front of you. Correct. Yeah, they already know you're in real estate, Right. right. And you'll have, there's in print materials and in all kinds of other ways, there will be opportunities for you to ask for referrals. More importantly, to thank people as they give you referrals. And if you're connecting with people on all kinds of different, <coughs> particularly social media, anytime you get a referral, you're going to say in, you know, in public, thank you so much for the referral, John and Susie. It really means a lot to us that you trusted us to send your friends our way, that kind of thing. And everybody else sees that as well. So again, it doesn't have to be in your face. Awesome. Yeah. So good stuff. It's right. That's awesome stuff. I love that kind of stuff. And like, that's the kind of stuff I'm really good at, like getting face to face with people. And, you know, that's like my type of prospecting is, uh, you know, getting face to face, texting, emailing, calling, sending gifts. Like, that's what I, that's what I'm like good at, you know? Well, you know, it's interesting because people, a lot of people say, oh, well, I just want to, you know, list houses over the phone. And are there people that can list houses over the phone? Yeah. Sure. But, that's like one infinitesimal percent of a percent of a percent of the agents in the business. I also feel like if you're doing that, you know, it kind of, you know, it, it, it kind of drives home 
what agents are getting upset about, right? So like the Zillow is trying to replace us by doing transactions completely online with no actual human being, you know, ever met or seen or relationship built. So I think that if anything right now, our biggest upper hand is the human, is the human touch and the human relationship. 100%, 100%. I mean, it's not only that, it's so much easier to build rapport face to face than it is over the phone. So why then would we miss out on that opportunity to really deepen rapport? And where do you think you're going to get more referrals by doing it over the phone or by doing it face to face, right? If I get face to face, they're a lot more likely to refer me than they are if I try and do everything over the phone. True. Yeah. True. true, true. Makes a big difference. Uh, All right. So let's, okay. So Alvin's asking a great question. He says, what's been the most effective invitation method? So why don't we get right into parts of the checklist here? Is that Alvin Tapia asking that question? It is. Alvin Tapia (laughs) is the video king. I love it. Well, Alvin, first and foremost, the number one way it's old school. It's pick up the freaking phone. It's call them literally. And honestly, I'll tell you why it's the number one way. It's Wait, not these about make, these make calls. Yeah, I know. Isn't that crazy? Yeah. Everybody's forgotten that they actually have a phone function on them now. They think it's just a little computer in your pocket. Uh, but the reality is the reason why we do this, the number one reason why we hold these client events is because it gives us that opportunity to get on the phone with somebody in a non-threatening way. So if we don't make the calls, we've missed the entire ever living point of the event, right? So make the phone call, invite them out. Now, there's a lot of other things that you can and should do. So let's talk about some of these. First of all, um, actually, um, well, let's, let's just go right into uh, yeah. the, the kind of the, the process, right? So six weeks ahead of time, I'm going to select the event venue. And you need to know this far enough ahead of time. Uh, have you ever had that happen where you, you're like, oh, where do you do this client event? And we don't have a venue planned. And oh, my gosh, and you get right up to it. And you're like, crap, yep. I can't get the venue we wanted. Right. Um, so you gotta be really careful about that. Make sure you've got your, your date and your venue booked first. Then you got to identify. Very good advice. Very good. Advice. <laughs> well, it's, it's easy to screw that one up. And I know. I know. <laughs> have you had that happen? <laughs> no, but I mean, it is good advice. You should probably like know where you're going to do it before you make promises. You do. So. Yeah. And, and that is a problem. So then you can look at, uh, you got to decide who on your team, if you have a team, who's going to spearhead this thing. Ideally it's not you. Right. If you have a team, pick somebody on the team other than the team leader to be responsible for this. Um, then you want to go through and we got to prepare to be able to invite a bunch of people to it. So the first thing in preparation for that is we're going to go through and friend every single one of our clients on Facebook. And this really gets into the must total must. Yeah. And the problem is a lot of people don't think about this and they say, Oh, but Nick, my, my, uh, I, I have a business page and I have a personal page and, I just, I have all my business contacts over here and all my personal contacts over here and they don't mix because I, I keep business and personal separate. Right. Yeah. I always like to tell them, hey, you're more than welcome to stay broke if you'd like. Uh, Right, exactly, exactly. (laughs) I mean, it's terrible, right? I mean, it's amazing to me like how, well, so for me, it's worked wonders because I recently relocated from New Jersey to Michigan I got my team still in Michigan and now I've got my team in New Jersey and I'm in Michigan. And so um, it's great because I'm getting calls and texts and emails from past clients who are like, um, Nick, you know, can we, 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 we want to buy or sell now and we know you're not physically here. Can, um, can one of your agents help us? And so <coughs> social media is so powerful. We're like, I built that trust up and they trust me so much to the fact that like, I'm no longer in the state and they're going to still work with my team. Huge. Right. How to use social media for both. Obviously don't oversaturate your Facebook page with business, but dropping little hints is always, is always beneficial. Absolutely. So we always tell people you want to follow about the 80, 20 rule, right? So on your personal page, about 80% of it should be personal and about 20% maximum should be business. Um, and there's more sophisticated models for that, but you know, essentially if you, if you keep 80% personal and 20% business, you're not going to offend too many people. Uh, and yet you're going to still be able to get the engagement you need to get so that when you do the business post, people are seeing it. Um, all right. So next you're going to want to get either a buffer account or something similar, cause you're going to want to post, or if you have a person in place, somehow you want to make sure uh, you can even do this just with Facebook scheduled posts, but you want to set this so that it's going to go out. 
uh, every three days automatically. So you want to make sure we're consistently posting about this event ahead of time. Uh, next thing we're going to do is we're going to want to have a landing page set up, right? And we're going to want to have retargeting pixels set up on our landing pages so that anybody that shows any little bit of interest in our client event, boom, we're retargeting them. Awesome. That's good. Yeah, it's huge. Um, all right, then we're going to take all of our client emails. So you go back into your database and you're going to literally download all of the emails for every single person in your database, unless they're one, a D, right? So a D being a ding dong and knucklehead, somebody I don't want to ever do business with again. So outside of those people, everybody in my database, I'm going to take their emails and their cell phone numbers. I'm going to upload them into Facebook as a custom audience um, so that I can be marketing to the people that are, are the most engaged with me. Um, I would even take this a step further and I would go in, if you're using a third party software like a, a Y Lopo or a, you know, Commissions Inc or Firepoint or whatever, you know, if I'm using any of these softwares, then what I'm going to do is I'm also going to go into my lead database and I'm going to do the same thing with my leads. I want to invite all of my leads to my client events as well. Again, it's going to be one more way that you can stand out from everybody else. And it's just different, right? It's something that other people probably aren't doing. Yeah, totally. Yeah. Would you recommend um, now, wait a minute, would you recommend inviting all of your leads or would you recommend inviting leads that like you've made contact with that you're like in communication with? What do you think? Uh, well, it depends on what you're doing. So first okay. and foremost, all the electronic marketing, that's easy. I have, there's no downside to me just inviting all of my leads. That's right? true. You're right. Yeah. So I, cause that's free marketing, right? Essentially yeah. I mean, it's pennies. So I'm going to, I'm going to market to everybody, all of my leads period. Now, if I'm doing, there will be certain events throughout the year that I might do that will be only for my closest clients. Like I had an investor group at one point and what we did with our investor group would uh, every year, every Christmas time. So I'd have two events in December. One was for all of my clients, everybody in my database. I invited everybody. That was the pictures with Santa event. Uh, the other event that we did uh, every year at Christmas time was only for this investor group and we would do a white elephant gift exchange. And the reason was because we wanted them to get to know each other better. And so we created this little culture within our, our company. Um, and so, no, we didn't invite everybody to that, just those investors. Uh, but the other thing you have to look at is the phone calls, right? So if I'm going to be making phone calls to these people, I'm not going to make phone calls to every lead in my database probably, right? I may or may not have the bandwidth for that. But what I will do is I'm going to call all of my A-plus clients. That's people that have done business with me or sent me a referral. I'm going to call all of my A clients. I'm sorry, uh, that's multiple referrals or multiple transactions of the A plus. A clients are anybody that sent me a referral or done business with me. Uh, I'm going to for sure call all of those personally. And then I'm going to make sure that either I or someone on the team is calling through all of the B clients as well. There was someone at Club Wealth, the, your Club Wealth event. <coughs> I'm forgetting his name. You probably know. You probably know. Uh, I was sitting at him. I was sitting with him at the at dinner and uh, – he has a big team and he had just done like a massive party where he uh, invited, he had like 600 people show up to a movie theater to watch infinity wars. Um, God, I don't remember who it was, but he was there. I don't know. He was at the event. Tristan and I were sitting with him and he said that. Was it Dan Baltzer? You know what? I wouldn't even know. I forget. I feel bad if he's watching, please chime in. But he had mentioned it was his first client event. He invited every single person in his database to watch Adventures of Infinity War. And he had 600 people show up to the movie theater. And we were just like, whoa, dude, that's crazy. So inviting your database, if you're going to do something like that, not like, not if you're going to have a movie under the stars in your backyard, you don't want 600 people showing up. But a movie theater, yes, that's a good idea. Well, I'm pretty sure that was Dan Baltzer, Mike Bernier, and Long Doan. I could be wrong, but I'm pretty sure that was those guys. And um, and so, but yes, that was a great event. Uh, and here's the thing. You got to also think about budget, right? If you're going to do a movie in a theater, it's going to be expensive, right? So yeah. you be prepared for that. Uh, now, that said, it's a great event, and we recommend, you know, like a Saturday matinee. But there's so many types of events you can do. It doesn't have to be just movies or just Santa Claus like the, the pictures with Santa is actually probably the most well attended event uh, that we see uh, people are, and I'll tell you if you really want to take that one to the next level a lot of people are doing where they can do uh, pet pictures with Santa so you bring oh, your, dog and your cat yeah people love that 
And then we also have people that will literally rent a reindeer. Uh, and oh, uh, wow. You can okay. get a reindeer, you can get your picture taken with reindeer. It's, it's easier than it sounds, especially for, you know, those of you that live really close to Canada. <laughs> yeah, that's true. That's uh, hilarious. Yeah, Rent. but it's true. I mean, you can do a lot of fun stuff like that, and it really does help kind of take that event to the next level without costing you a bunch of money. Um, true. Wow. Zillow, Zillow's not going to rent a reindeer for you guys. Keep that. <laughs> there's actually, we have websites in our checklist for, you know, if you want to rent a Santa, there's national organization for renting a Santa. I mean, this stuff is easier than it sounds, and you don't have to reinvent the wheel. Others have gone before. You just copy what they've done. True. Uh, Okay, so just make sure your Santa doesn't smell like beef and cheese. Oh my gosh, we've had Probably. drunk Santas. Uh, that's not good. You've had drunk Santas? Oh no, not at ours, but we've had clients that ended up with a drunk Santa. Um, and yeah, not good. Don't. Oh, so Alvin has another question Is your custom audience <clears throat> receiving Facebook lead ads? He's a little unclear. I don't, I don't know. Yeah, no, I like. Yeah, I think an Eventbrite would be good if they want to sign up to go. Yes. Yeah. Eventbrite, Eventbrite for most of you, like we don't use Eventbrite just because we have Infusionsoft and all these big back-end funnels and all this stuff. You don't need all that. Just use Eventbrite. It's super simple. It's great. It's free, and it's free. That's right. Um, and it'll integrate well. And so don't overcomplicate it. Keep it super simple. Uh, really, and the other thing is make sure you're using video whenever you possibly can. Calvin, Calvin, who just asked that question. You know how to use video. He's yeah. Like, but that's the key, right? And, and I would also recommend regularly going on Facebook Live video, with video to promote the event, to talk about the event, uh, you know, to talk about all the fun stuff you're going to do and, you know, mention the fun stuff you did before, tag people in it, you know, all that good stuff. Also, make sure you create an event on Facebook, invite everyone, and then go live within the event because even if they haven't RSVP'd, they're still going to see that live video. Right. So you get them to want to come by building that excitement. Well, and that brings me to another point, which is so important. When you do these events, always, always, always have a videographer at your events. Every oh, time. true. That's Cannot true. forget that. You got to have a videographer at your events because then you have the video for promoting that same event next year. And so I would recommend more often than not, you want to have four events each year that are always the same event every year, right? You might have one that you just, you know, you rotate different events in and out of, but for sure three out of those four, it's going to be the same. Like you're going to have pictures of Santa every year. And what will happen is people will come every year because that's where they go to get their picture with Santa because they don't want to wait in the mall line and they don't want to deal with that whole mall Santa thing. Um, you know, and, and same thing, maybe you're doing an Easter egg hunt. We've had clients have really good success with Easter egg hunts. Oh, those are, that's a good one too. Yeah. Oh yeah. There's tons of, well, let's just talk about that for a second. Should we go into some of the ideas that you can do? Yeah. Some Easter egg hunt, Santa, you can do pictures of the Easter bunny. Mm -hmm. Picture of the Easter egg hunt. <clears throat> um, you could do, I don't know, what other holidays um, that you oh, could I got a bunch of them. We did a uh, thing. Well, a lot of people do Thanksgiving pie giveaways. Uh, oh, that's a good one. Come to your office to get the pie, right? So um, another one is the uh, Halloween hoedown. We did, this was one that worked really well for us. So in October, uh, we would do a Halloween hoedown and people would come. We'd have costume contests. We'd have, and we did, we combined it with a harvest party. So we took them for rides on the track, you know, in, in a wagon pulled by our tractor all over the place. It was super fun. Um, baseball games, major and minor league baseball games. Oh, that's a good one. Yeah, you get nosebleed section. And what you do is you never send anybody the ticket. Don't ever, ever send them the ticket. They have to meet you at the stadium and take a picture with you to get their ticket. Oh, that's good. Yeah, and so that's the key is get and, and I would even go a step further and have my videographer and my photographer there. They come, I give them the ticket, and we get a quick little, you know, how's it going? A little quick video uh, of us just talking and chit chatting, and then they get to have a picture of just them and their family out in front of the stadium. And then afterwards, we send them the picture of them and their family. You can also send them the one with you in it, but the the key here is send them the one that's just them and their family because that brings more value to them. That's something they'll use. And I also have my logo down. It's kind of watermarked on the lower right. Hand. Oh, that's good. Yeah. Um, a couple ideas that I have for like smaller, more VIP events, like, you know, cause look, we all have lots of past clients and we have a big sphere, but we only have like, we have, we, and we also have very VIPs. Like 
ones that send us lots of business, right? So I think you got to be extra special for them. So um, like I had, I have one that last year sent me four referrals that equaled 60,000 in commission. Like that's like a, uh, you know, if I had like 10 more of those, right? That's all yeah. I need. So for those people, some things like, um, you know, rent out like a hair salon or a barbershop what, and, you know, for two hours and like get the guys shaved up and trimmed and have like, you know, have like, uh, you know, some nice scotch or whiskey with cigars. You could do some like kind of manly thing, you know, and then if you want to do, hey, listen, if the guys want to do it too, do the Manny Petties. I'm just saying. I don't Whoa. Want, I don't now want. you're talking Luigi Caprio. I just don't want to. I don't want to offend anybody. Women and men both shop. Guys get Manny Petties too. I'm just saying, right? Um, but those kind of fun things are too are good too. Like a beauty shop and get get your get your get you know do the hair and stuff and do the barber shop with the beards and the and stuff like that with with like Scotch whiskey. That stuff's fun and it's really VIP and intimate. You know? That's hilarious. I'm putting in the note here. The, the, the Coach Luigi loves those Manny Petties. He always does that before. I love a good Manny Petty too. So I'm just saying. I love it. That's awesome. That's hilarious. So, okay. So some more, you know, would be like skating parties. Uh, the movie night matinees we talked about. Uh, self-sufficiency night. Go-kart racing. Uh, we've seen a lot of people doing barbecues. Some, some of them have done wine tastings. Um, Easter egg hunts, food trucks, right? Now this is a crazy one, but people love the food trucks, right? The taco truck. Or the oh, yeah. People love those things. Um, let's see, we've got uh, candy buyback program at Halloween. I have an oral surgeon buddy of mine uh, that does this every year and it worked really well for him. So he buys it back for like a dollar a pound or whatever. Uh, and it, what it does is it gets mom and dad with their kids back into his office. Um, okay. so that's what they do. They got to come to your office for you to buy it back. Uh, our well, the, the one that we did that was my personal favorite was our luau. We had a luau. Oh, we, we used to live on. Fun. Oh, it was a phenomenal. We we lived on the lake, and it was we did it for Fourth of July. So we we went out. We bought a whole bunch of fireworks. Blew up just a ton of stuff. A lot of aerial stuff. Um, at the end of the party, but in the beginning, what we did was we had the pig roasting and the emu in the ground, and we had hula dancers, and we actually had um, a, an outrigger canoe we got with the local outrigger canoe club, and they came from all the way across the lake, rode up to our beach, and these these guys jumped out, and they did the fire knife dancing right there for everybody. It was so cool. Yeah. Everybody loved that one and was talking about it like crazy. Oh, I just want to say, somebody, somebody commented, see, Michael, this is why I don't want to offend anybody. You know, pictures with Santa leave out all the Jewish people. Now, let me comment on that because I'm Jewish. I, my parents would take me to get my pictures with Santa, even though I'm Jewish. It's not a religious thing. Santa's not a religious figure. He's a cartoon created by Coca-Cola. It's not religious. It's wintertime. The Jewish kids can get their pictures taken with Santa too. <laughs> this is I did when I was a kid. That's awesome. <laughs> I love it. That's great. But you know, you're, you're hitting the nail on the head here. It's not, nobody's trying to leave anybody out. Nobody's. No, you know, no. It's like Easter, right? Like, even though, you, you know, I'm sure, you know, the, because you're Jewish, you may not, do, do, you, do you celebrate Easter? Uh, well, my wife's Catholic and I'm Jewish. So we celebrate, we celebrate all the holidays. We get double yeah. off. Exactly. Exactly. Uh, and so, you know, the bottom line is Easter, you know, for most people, it's about finding Easter eggs. It's like, that's not right. really complicated. No, it is. It is. But just want the kids to have fun. That's really what they're doing. You're providing them with a little bit of entertainment. Um, uh, Alvin Tappy is really upset with me right now. He says, you're wrong. Nick Santa is real. So, ah, uh, uh, that's funny. And I like his comment about how do you verify or get basic data on how many peeps are showing up? I'll tell you, there's a lot of ways to do this. Um, and it depends on how big your event is, but I'll tell you what I would recommend. Give stuff away. When you give stuff away and they have to enter, or if like if you have bounce houses and all this kind of stuff for the kids, then they have to fill out a waiver and get a wristband so their kid can, um, you know, bounce on the bounce house. No wristband, you don't get to bounce. And so how do they get the wristband? Mom's got to be there with them. We got to, you know, you can use something like Open Home Pro even would work for this. Yeah, um, I love it. Oh, yeah. Tons of different ways you can do it. But the wristband thing works really, really well to make sure that you're getting their contact information and that you can follow up with them after the fact. Um, and so, and again, don't overcomplicate it. Uh, you got stuff like uh, back to school night. Oh, here's a big one. This one's, this is going to sound really kind of lame, but people freaking love this one. 
it's a shred day where you rent a shredded truck. Oh yeah, that's and, a good one. Yeah, we've had we've had really good success with this. Where uh, I've got a client in um, in uh, Granada Hills, uh, California. There, over kind of by where Tristan's at. Uh, in fact, he actually shares one of his markets. Uh, is a market he and Tristan are both in. And what he does is he rents um, a shredded truck for his farm, and he takes it into his farm area. Right. So he's he's killing two birds with one stone. So he does this in the farm and invites all of his sphere of influence and clients to come and they get to shred whatever they want to shred. And you'd be surprised how many people every year are waiting for this event and they yep. bring boxes and boxes and boxes of stuff they get to shred. That's a good one. Well, what's really nice about that is who has a bunch of stuff to shred? How oh, I have so much stuff to shred. Well, but, it, but think about this. Professionals, right? People that... Right. You know, right. Oh, you're, you're right. right. So what do, what do professionals have? Money, right? So these are the kind of people we want to be attracting. Uh, but the shredded event is a big one. Um, and I would suggest with all of your client events, whenever possible, you want to combine it with your farm area and your sphere of influence whenever possible. Um, so if like, if I'm doing the movie night, I would want to do the movie night in like in the movie in the park specifically, if I'm going to do a movie in the park. I'm going to do it in a park that's in my in my farm area, and then I'm going to invite all of my people to it as well. Um, and I'm going to put signs out everywhere. In fact, I'm going to make sure I've got signs out three days before the event. Very important. So, um, all right, other stuff: ice cream trucks, moving trucks, movies in the park, petting zoos. There's all kinds of stuff you can do. You guys just Ooh, petting zoos. Petting zoos are fun. Yeah, again, don't get overly complicated with it, but just be you. I've had people, they'll literally like, so we've got people that like to travel, right? And so what do the people like to travel do? So they'll go to, they'll go to <coughs> Singapore, uh, or no, that's a bad, oh, maybe not a bad example, or India. Let's say, just use India as an example. They'll go to, to Bangalore, Bangalore, or, you know, whatever, India. And they come back and they'll invite all their clients to come over and they'll decorate their house up with all this Indian stuff. And they'll have authentic Indian food catered at their house so that people can experience, you know, it's like a night in Bangalore or a night in Morocco or whatever. Oh, that's cool. Oh yeah. People love that kind of stuff. And then they tell stories, they have pictures and videos and stories about this trip they took to this place that most people won't ever go. Uh, so just fun stuff. The key is have fun with it. Do it on a consistent basis and don't be weird. Right. Like, <laughs> I guess that's the, the the biggest thing is just don't be cheesy and don't be weird. Don't don't be asking you know who do you know that's thinking about buying or selling a home. You, you know you just to dial that back. Time in a place. Yep. You don't want to invite someone to a party and make them feel like you you know it was a bait and switch. That's right. Yeah. The worst thing you could do is you know you stand up in front of them and you're like, okay, so everybody who's gonna send me a referral, woo! Yeah, then you're not gonna come to your next event and then you totally ruined it. That's correct. That's exactly what happens. So, uh, and somebody, an anonymous attendee asks, what about sponsors? How much to ask for from each? And actually, first of all, that's a great idea. Oh, yeah. oh, you know, I have a good idea for that. Mm -hmm. so you said always have someone there um, to photograph. Uh -huh. so, uh, what we did with, with our, with one of our events was we actually, um, we actually hide, we actually had the local, we had um, a photography studio come and uh gave us free um it took pictures for free and then um whoever wanted to get their photo had to you know give their information to the photo studio so then that photo studio could build their database and they also supplied really great um professional photos to people who um to wanted them at the party yeah and if they wanted extra prints or a larger print or whatever they could buy those from yeah. a photographer which is again how the photographer makes money um, and you may, by the way, don't give up a lot of times and people, I want you to think really careful about this. You guys, a lot of people give up too easy, right? So they'll ask a photographer, Hey, would you do this? You know, and Michael and Nick were talking about blah, blah, blah. Would you be willing to do it? And the photographer says, no. Well, first of all, don't quit asking, go deeper with them, right? Resolve the concerns. But if, if you just can't get that photographer to do it, guess what? There's a lot of other photographers out there. Move to the next one. And the next one, and the next one, until you get to the one that's going to do what you need to do. 
uh, you know, you may go through 20 or 30 of these before you finally find one that will do it, but it's worth it because now you can have them do it for all of your client events and they're now building rapport with your database, which brings value to them and to you and to your database. Exactly. So, Love good it. stuff. All right. That's it. I think we're good, dude. We're, we're, wow. we're 41 after. We're, we're 40 minutes into this thing. I, it, it, you know what I thought was great? <clears throat> this is a topic that people love because <clears throat> it's a topic that not, that most people aren't implementing. And it's so fun and easy to do. And it's the best way to get in front of people that you already know, people that love you already. And everyone has a good time. And, you know, you're going to get business from it. And they're going to get, you know, they're going to have a fun party. And, <clears throat> the greatest part is when they start posting on Facebook and they start tagging you and then other people start saying, Hey, look, that guy throws great parties. And there's so many amazing ways to uh, have a win-win with it. Yep. And that's the key is it really, as, as you do it consistently, it begins to spread, but you have to do it consistently. Right. Uh, Just with everything else you got. Oh, uh, one more question. Should you have marketing materials sitting on a client? No. So that's, I don't think so, Michael. What do you think? I think it's cheesy. Yeah. Um, I'd be really careful about that. I, you know, there's a time and a place where it depends on, on the event. It depends on how big it is. Like, if I'm doing a really big movie event, right? So let's say I've got, I'm doing the event where I've got 600 people coming to see a movie. Then I don't have a problem with having some stuff out in the hallway on the way. And, you know, as they're coming through, they're gathering. You know, you've got a couple of sponsors out there and they're getting their, you know, you're providing them with popcorn and drinks and and all this stuff, and you might have a few, like you might have a, yeah. the, maybe the popcorn bucket has your logo on it, or you know something like well, that. If, if you have a big movie event like that, and you need a sponsor, like you know maybe like a general contractor or a plumber or something like that, and you want to you want to put their logo on something, you want to get up on stage and say, you know, thank you guys for coming, and thank you for like you know Joe the plumber for making this possible, you know that type of stuff. But like in terms of marketing yourself, with I don't think I think that's in bad taste. Yeah, yeah, I'd be careful about that as well. Yeah. So, so. great question though. This was so much fun. I loved it. It's a great topic, and thanks for knocking it out of the park as always. My pleasure. Thank you so much for having me. And by the way, you guys, if you ever if you want to find out more about uh, this, there's a couple of places you can go. Go to the Lab Coats yeah. website because uh, you guys will have this on your website, I believe, in the uh, uh, the Random Acts of Coaching section. Is that right? Yeah. So go to labcoatagents.com, Random Acts of Coaching section, and you'll find uh, this blog that Michael wrote for us, which is amazing. The checklist is there. You can go to clubwealth.com. Check out what Michael's doing. Uh, go to join the Club Wealth Real Estate Group. Anything else you want? Anything else they should do? I would start with that. I'd just say, hey, look, if you go check, take a look at clubwealth.com and uh, and go look at all of the different uh, blog posts on there. We do a lot of great blog posts. It's all free, right? We've got tons and tons of great free content in there. There's always a video, then there'll be the explanation, and then there's always a download, and it's always a really good download. It's free. It never costs anything. You just download the stuff, and if you just copy the checklist you'd be surprised at how efficient they are and how well they work. Um, and then, you know, like you said, if people are interested, uh, take a look at our Facebook group. It's uh, facebook.com forward slash groups forward slash club. Well, that's it. Awesome, man. Um, thank you so much, Michael. Have a great day. This was a good one. Sounds great. Thank you so much, Nick. Thanks for having me, man. All right. Have a good one.